Hey y'all! Welcome to a new demo let's play! Hey! Oh my god! I know, I know, before y'all started shouting at me, like, where have you been with this girl? Like, girl, you're so late. You're so late on this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just keep, it's all like a mixture of pushing things back and forgetting about this to be quite honest and prioritizing other things i'm so sorry but anyways welcome guys finally it's been a long time coming for this i'm pretty sure for some of you who are a fan of this franchise it's the demo to mystic destiny's echoes yes oh my god i know once upon a time ago, for those of you who um, have might have forgotten, uh, Mystic Destiny Serendipity of Aeons was a main game that the same creators, Aeon Dream Studios of like, you know, To the Edge of the Sky has created and I had done a Let's Play for. Long, long time ago. That's one of their main games. And, um, of course, following that game, they had announced that they were going to do a spin-off on one of the characters that we've met in the story of Serendipity of Aeons. And which obviously produced this this story here, Echoes, and it involves that character. I think Aurelia was his name. Was her name? Was her name Aurelia? Yeah, Aurelia is like. Um, I'm trying to give you a visual here. She's like dark skinned, and we met her in. Oh my God, I <laughs> Takumi's route. Oh my God, I can't remember. I can't believe I remember the name Takumi's route. So this dude over here, the dude with the silver hair. We met her in Takumi's route. She's like his mentor, basically, in terms of dealing with the supernatural and being an investigator. So, Aurelia is this dark, the dark-skinned woman who's like silver hair. She's got these like amazing little like freckles that look like stars on your skin, and she's a, a winged sylph, I believe it was. Anyways, the description of the story is on the Itchio page, so if you want to go ahead and check that out and read it through and get an idea of what this is all about. But for those of you who already know about it or have you know, like take a gander at the screen or you know what it's about, it's about her story and of course our favorite, you know, super villains in the main in the main from the main story. Yes, our hot super villains. They need to get their own spin out stories because, you know, it would be a waste if they would just make that, you know, small appearance in the main story and then that's the last we'll ever see of them. So yeah, let's uh, of course so and you know we all fall for the bad, the bad guy, the baddies, the bad boy. So you know this is this is our chance. This is our chance to live out our fantasies here. So <laughs> without further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, hopefully I'm not too I'm not too behind on this. Like you know too late on this. Well, better late than never because the demo is only on version one status, and sometimes the developers have like version 2.0 kind of thing going on before they release the full game. Um, and also it's copyrighted 2019, so it's still within the year. It's still within this year. It's still, it's still, I'm still good. I'm still good. Whatever. Anyways, enough of my rambling. Let's just get started. And uh, yeah. Oh, and I guess I should probably tell you guys. If you guys need a refresher, by all means, go check out my Serendipity of Aeons um, Let's Play playthrough just to get you know in touch and familiarize yourself again with these characters in front of you. I for sure need to, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead anyways, and I'm sure their names will pop up, and I'll remember. I'll start to remember them anyway. So let's go. Begin. So chapter one, Tide Rising. Okay. 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 So what do we do here? What's happening? Ooh, oh my god, we're revisiting so many familiar settings. The fox tail bar. Fox's tail bar. Oh my god. A popular hangout spot for young Yoru locos, which is basically the same thing as saying of college age kids up to no good. Oh, yes. So there we go. Okay, so there she is, our main heroine of the story, which is Aurelia. So the scene is grungy and sometimes rough, but that suits my taste just fine. And this is her partner in crime. I believe her name is Pax. She's like this pirate queen, queen where she like gallivanders off to do adventures and dangerous things, like Tomb Raider style kind of thing. So that's the basis of the story. Long, long story short, for those of you who don't want to read that entire like you know entirety of the story. So us two, we have history of going off to adventures. The last adventure we went off to, um, 
was a little bit of an iffy one. We we barely escaped from it because we accidentally unleashed something. I think it was the power of chaos that it turns out to be. So the power of chaos was unintentionally released by us on our little quest adventures together. And you know, several years after that, af after that incident, you know, our partner in crime here comes barreling into our lives again, into our apartment, and saying that you know, hey, we got a problem. That thing that we did last time when we were going out on adventures, yeah, it's coming back again, and we need to stop it before it destroys the entire world. And of course, we couldn't do, we can't do that to you know by ourselves. We need to get the help of all these other guys. So that's that's where our villains come into play. So yeah. Let's just go. That's it. That's basically the story of it. Okay. So it's also a good place for anyone looking for good drinks. So my friend Pax and I come here sometimes. Yes. Uh, but that's not what we're here for today. Yes. Today we're looking for help with a little problem we've fallen into. Yes. Well, that might be an understatement. My, my contact informed me an Alfer, Alfer Knight had been seen hanging around this bar. So here I am. I snort, thinking about how desperate we must be to be thinking to ask a knight for help. I s uh, sipping on my drink, my eyes slowly look around the room, but it only takes a moment to spot who I'm looking for. Is it? Yes, him! Yeah, this guy. This guy we met in Shinji's Ra. He's supposed to be the knight for the queen, the knight's guard for the queen. I don't know, he's a right-hand man, but he's... I don't know, I don't consider him a villain, but he was unintentionally on the wrong side of, the, you know, the, the whole story. So there's no doubt about it with that armor. The man stands out against the local patrons, even with his, even with only his aura. There's no doubt in my mind that that man is a skilled and powerful fighter. Yes, his eye patch and scar would seem to indicate he'd he'd escaped death on at least one occasion. Yeah. So the bar oh bartender miss hello the bartender a succubus called Sherizel Sher is that how you pronounce her name? Hands us both our drinks. She's pretty. Sherizel has always been kind to me whenever we see each other, so I give her a brief smile. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, no problem. That's what I'm here for, after all. Yes. So she grins at me, scooting my glass just a little closer. Uh, on the house, don't worry. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, Aurelia. Oh, my God. I have been pronouncing her name wrong the entire time. Aurelia. Aurelia. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the proper pronunciation. Sherry follows my gaze over to the knife for a moment, then turns back to turns back to us with a smile. Uh, you kn know him from somewhere? Mm, not really. I look back at the knight. I mean, I don't know, as far as I'm concerned. We haven't really crossed paths. Everything about him stands out in the bar. In fact, I bet he stands out in all of Yoru. So he looks like some sort of- he looks like the sort of guy who'd attract a lot of attention and not the good kind. Oh. Just wondering if he's- just wondering if he's who I think he is. Uh, I might have heard uh, him of. I might have heard of him a while back, maybe last year or the one before. Uh, what? Really? I guess. <laughs> How? Uh, there was some reports over a year ago. He's been around this area before. Yes, I don't know the details, but it seems that Alpha Loyal Royalty had always had some issues that spilled out into this realm. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's Shinji. The whole Shinji thing. Uh, Sherazel's voice suddenly chimes in from behind the counter. The knight's name is Cillian. Yes, that's his name. Been coming here for a while now. Okay, so always orders the same drink. Seems to be a lot on his mind. Uh, she trails off looking at his lonesome form. Okay, so Pax snorts in amusement. Not exactly surprising. As put together as they like to appear, the Alpha were always a damn mess. Pax picks up her drink and tosses it back in one hit. Uh, it's surprising that they managed to rule over Avalon for as long as they have been. Honestly, yeah. I may have left Avalon many years ago, but I haven't forgotten all the non all of the nonsense the Alpha get uh, get up to, yeah, or how some of them like to mess with my kind just for fun. So my eyes slide back over to the Alpha Knight, but this guy, yeah, on the surface at least, he looks serious, probably the dependable type, uh, the t the kind you'd want on your side if there were crazy people trying to attack you, right? Sherazel puts another drink down in front of Pax, but I barely notice. How should I approach him? Is this our choice? Is this our, our choice here? We gotta save here. Oh well! <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a glitch here, but like, our our to the end of the sky choices are here and save slots are, are here as well too. Haha, <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, anyways, yes. It is in the same kind of format 
um, the outline, the uh, what's it called? The UI is very similar to that of To the Edge of the Sky, and it, it, there has been a like a note by the developers that says that it is a little buggy in that area, but like it, it, it should work. Everything should work just fine. Okay, so I go through what I know slowly. Most Alpha Knights uh, I've seen were polite, but from what I can tell, this particular knight is seriously stiff. And Pax, as in Nerade, Nerade. Can we click on? Like, can we click on? <gasps> we can! I've been missing out on that. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, that's so cool! I was wondering if that was just like a choice of an aesthetic for the text to like let let us know that oh, it's important things like to note to like you'll be informed of. But no, like, if you click on it, you, it actually takes you to this little tip, this little thing where it gives you tidbit information on it. Oh my god! Okay, I might I might have to do this over again just to show you guys about um, show you guys what what some of the things say so either way regardless I think it'll, it'll just be a part of the other choices episode that I will, I will make afterwards so narrates 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 so the, the, a type of fae that resemble what is known as water nymphs in human mythos oh their location is hidden away from all and they themselves are under law uh, that forbid to leave their land they worship only one water god and have water powers themselves oh makes sense she's a pirate after all <laughs> But we do need his help. Oh no! <laughs> but then that just that like what's it called? That like takes us to it takes me to the next thing. So let's just go back on that. So um, 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 where are we? Why is it okay? I go through what I have slowly. Okay, why isn't it coming up with my recent one? I don't see my yeah my recent thing. Oh no! Can I? Let's just do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so while the Chowa district is known for being one of the largest magical districts in the world, the red light pa the red light portion of it, known as Yoru, is known as one of the most dangerous. There we go. So I didn't click on it because I already know what your your Yoru was. Oh, what Yoru was. So uh, that's just for you guys to like, I guess, I guess, re familiarize yourself with this universe. So. Pax, so Pax is our friend. So you're a friend of too many years to count. You met in Yoru and have been dragged into many adventures by her. Known as the Pirate Queen, she's not entirely reliable and often goes off without mentioning where for years at a time. Yes. She just sort of, uh, she's a free spirit, that one. Okay. okay. Oh, okay, so we obviously, like a phone, you click, <laughs> you click the, the home button. Okay, anything else that we kind of missed? Alpha. Okay, so we can do Alpha. So the main ruling, uh, the main ruling subrace of the Fae of Avalon. They resemble what is known as elves in human mythos. They are known for their worship, their worship of the god of chaos and general trickery. Yes, there's that. We already, I already know that. I, I'm, I'm sort of familiar. I'm starting to remember everything. So. Succubus is the next one. Well, we all know what a succubus is. A subspecies of demons that are known to sustain themselves off the sexual energy of others, gained by seduction. They are looked down upon by many races. There we go. So yeah, I'm surprised at uh, my last dialogue with with my with our like mentions of what's it called, um, the na the Nereid na Nereid thing. Okay, maybe it'll appear after this. So, so but we do need this help. Our lives are at stake after all. Okay, can we like? Oh, am I just tripping? I guess, I guess not. Dang. Okay, whatever. Or maybe that's just a new line of dialogue that was added and it wasn't registering in the log. Oh, anyways, forget about it. Forget about it. So before I can uh, finish thinking, Pax downs her drink and slams the glass down on the bar. Why so violent, Pax? <laughs> Polit political nonsense aside, we should talk to this guy and see if he's any good. Wait, Pax? Pax? She ignores me already out of her seat and making her way towards him. I get up and rush after her as she approaches the knight. My eyes fall down to the hand she's keeping close to her weapon. Pax? I mutter her name through clenched teeth, but she doesn't stop. Does she want to be thrown in Aval Avalonian jail? She, she should let me handle this. When Pax reaches the knight's table, she leans over at the smile on her lips wide. She's a little... <laughs> You're a knight, and we just so happen to need one. Oh god, Pax. I can't help but let her aside. Not the best opening, but knowing Pax, it could have been worse. Right. The knight's, ex the knight's expression flicks from confusion to, su to surprise, but he doesn't move otherwise. I notice Pax relax, and her hand doesn't, but her hand doesn't leave her side. The knight is silent for a moment, the ice in his glass clings as he twirls, in it, it, twirls it in his hand. 
He leans back in his seat, his eyes sta studying us both carefully, quickly. You're Cecilian, right? I know her approach needs work, but she's not lying. We definitely need a knight. Yes, let's just click on that. So knight, Avalon. So an alpha warrior war who serves the royalty of the four courts. They are supposed to adhere to the strict moral codes, which sets them apart from most fey. There we go. So I will hear you out. Okay, so what is it that you need a knight for? Well, we got problems. <laughs> Pax completely removes her hand from her side, and I let out yet another sigh of relief. We both sit down at Cillian's table. So I'll explain. Have you heard of the cult of Mir? Mir, really? They're always screaming on street corners about the promised land or whatever. Yeah, they're always screaming on street on street corners about the promised land or whatever. Uh, they've been especially eh. <laughs> oh. They've been especially annoying here in Yordu lately, so I'm sure you've noticed them. Celia nods, his eyes looking curious. Okay, and I'm sure you've heard of all that. At and I'm sure you heard of all the attacks lately. Did I accidentally skip over a dialogue just because it clicked too fast? No, I didn't. Okay, so. Uh, I have. Okay, so there's been attacks. So, well, this cult. They seem to have fixated on me and my friend here. Oh, I see. Is there any reason for it, right? I carefully, I carefully consider my words for a moment. How much does he really need to know about this? Uh, I'm not the worst person in the world, but... I've probably done some things that might make it that might make him say no to helping us, and Pax definitely has. Suddenly, I wonder if knights have some sort of vow to only protect pure innocent maidens or something. Nah, best not to risk it. Well, yeah, either way, yes. We haven't been able to find out why they're going up for us exactly, but we're looking into it, and we think there's something bigger going on here. If you join us, we'd be able to tell you more eventually. But right now, they're making even they're making even looking into what's happening difficult. Yes, it's not it's to the point I'm scared to sleep in my own house. They know where I live, and they've come after me. And they've come after me there. They wrecked they wrecked a place. Yeah, they, they wrecked the place, and we managed to get out of life. But Pax got hurt, and uh, that's why we need you. Pax is a well. She's not well. She's no one powerful, and I'm. And I'm just a sylph. There we go. We can see we can see sylph. So sylph is a fey race that lives in Avalon, primarily mountainous and valley regions. They worship the wind and wind god, wind, the wind, eh, the wind and wind gods and goddesses. There we go. And have wind powers themselves. They have nearly invisible, fragile wings and in, and an e equally fragile body with hollow bones. They are very small in stature compared to most other races and have cold hues of skin tones, in part due to the blue in part due to the blue blood. Because of these traits, they are sometimes abused by Alpha, and leaving Avalon can mean being sold into slavery or other terrible fates. Oh wow, shit. So you blow on me hard enough you blow on me hard enough, I break. Yes, I'm very as you know, as tough as I am, I'm a very fragile being biologically wise. <laughs> We've gotten into our fair share of scraps of scrapes, but we're no fighters. Yeah, and not like a knight of the high king, uh, of the high king must be. Yeah. Okay, high king, the ruler of Avalon. Currently, there are two. Really? Yes, my reports had told me that this. Ah, uh, yes, my reports has told me that this wasn't just any Alfred knight, but one of the high king himself. I can't believe he just. I can't believe he'd have the time to help me, honestly. But he is just hanging around here drinking all day. Yeah, Cillian's eyes remain on me even after I finish speaking. Uh-huh. It's a dangerous job, you know. It's highly likely you'll get hurt. Uh, but I'm sure you can handle it. Cillian continues to stare at us silently for a moment, and I can tell he's seriously thinking about what, he, about what we said. Honestly, I'm just grateful for even that, with, with as crazy as all this sounds. I let Cillian have a moment to think, but as he opens his mouth to reply... What? Oh, for fuck's sake, what? Are we getting attacked? I glance up at Pax, who's now standing, but her eyes are trained somewhere past me. Have we been followed? I follow her gaze and see... <gasps> eh, yes, cultists, of course. Eh, <laughs> we've been found. I jump out of my seat to stand, to stand beside Pax. Oh, at least their timing is good. I hardly have time to finish my sentence before I have to duck to avoid a blast of water headed our way. Hey, man! The patrons around us start screaming, as expected. Some run straight out of the bar as if they already know the drill. <laughs> these guys are really go these guys are really going to fight us in the bar. I know, right? Huh? And how the hell did they even find us? Oh, oh no! We gotta share Sherry. Sherry, you need to like get out of here. <laughs> From across the bar, through the small group of people running, Sherizel looks at us with wide eyes. I'm so sorry. What are you doing? 
Get out of here. Yeah. Her eyes dart from us to the cultists briefly before she flees too, right? I'm so sorry about your bar, okay? Out of the corner of my eye, I see Cillian launch himself at the nearest cultist without hesitation. Wow. There's a sudden glint of metal cutting through the dim light in the bar. Cillian moves so quickly that it almost seems like he glides forward through the air, bl blade drawn and ready. His eyes burn with an icy resolve. He slashes up towards one of the cultists as he moves close. As he moves close, his movement, movements sharp and precise as the blade strikes true. The cultist yells out in pain, the front of his clothes turning darker in an instant. Uh, Cillian turns gracefully, and gr gracefully, the muscles in his arms tensing as he slashes the cultist again. Oh wow! The blade strikes him the second time. He tries to he tries to cry out, but it only comes out as a gurgle. The cultist falls to the floor like a sack of, pota of potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> His partner jumps back several steps away from Cillian. Yeah, I think you should go. <laughs> the second cultist summons a large barrier of water, and it flows into the shape of a wall between him and Cillian. It's clear the hunter has become the hunted. Cillian simply stays where he is, watching the man through the barrier. None of us move a muscle. Okay, so come on, your friends are already dead. Yeah, your friends are already dead. You can try and fight us, but you, do you really want to? Right. Pax makes a gesture with her hands. It's so slight that I nearly missed it, but I can guess what she means. I glance at Cillian just as he looks back to us, and in the moment of our, and in that moment our eyes meet. Pax carefully steps away, then standing right in front of me and blocking me from the cultist's view. Just give up already. Just give up, really. It's much better for you. T it's much better for your health, right? I agree on that too. Though the cultist can't see me anymore, Cillian can. Cillian can, and I put a finger on my lips. I gesture to him, hoping to convey what the plan is. He nods very slightly and turns his attention back to the cultist. Okay, I can only hope that he got he got it as I go to make my move. As Pax keeps the guy focused on her, I quickly move to the side, carefully to remain unseen. Cillian stands in place, blood-stained sword at the ready, and his eyes fully trained on the other man. Using my wings, I hover just above the ground so as to not make any any sound while I creep around to get behind the cultist. I reach down to my leg and pull out one of my larger daggers. Inch by inch, I slowly move. I slowly get closer to him, my grip on the dagger tightening as I get ready to strike. Finally, I'm within reach. Losing no time, I swing my blade towards him, but as I do, he stiffens for, for the briefest of moments and slides right out of the way. What? But he's not at, But he's not fast enough and my blade nicks him on the wrist before he moves away. Wow, okay, so tch. I'm I'm annoyed. <laughs> he tries to get out of my reach, but I twist around, slashing for him. He dodges that too, and I can feel my annoyance quickly rising. Getting a hit on this guy is proving harder than I thought. Rel, move. Oh. I glance back where, when Pax calls out to me, and I see her raise her hand in one fluid motion. Before the guy can realize what's going on, I jump away and he's blasted back with a jet of water. He crashes into the bar into the bar, and bottles go rolling and shattering everywhere. The moment the water eases... Ooh, there's a sound like thunder, then a bolt of lightning hits him out of nowhere. Oh my god, really? Holy shit! That's, that's like scared me, that legit scared me. What? Lightning? Oh yeah, it's the thing. That's his power. Yeah, he can he can control lightning. I get I glance back to Cillian and see him lowering his hand. Or at least that's his like that's his like what's it called? His strong his stronger magic is lightning and like electricity, I guess. I stare back in horror at the cultist, watching as he convulses, thrashing just enough to keep anyone away. We can only stare at him until finally his body stops twitching. Alright, is he dead? I don't know. His head rolls weakly to the side. And without picking it up, he looks me directly in the eyes. There's a wild and desperate glint in his own. Okay, so I guess he's just paralyzed. Then, fear. I have a sudden bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. What? Oh, where'd he go? Then the, uh, the cultist's entire body bursts into nothing but a watery, bloody mess before our eyes. Ew, that's... Ugh. <laughs> I have to seize the sudden urge to vomit. Uh, again? Ugh. What the fuck? After staying for a moment, Cillian sheath his sword. Okay, he and Pax moves closer to me. There's not a single person left in the bar now, after all that insanity. I cross my arms and turn my body away from the puddle. All I can think about is that last terrified look the cultists gave me. Again? Has this happened before? I guess. His expression remains serious as he bends down, carefully examining the puddle on the floor. Yes, unfortunately. I don't... I don't know why or what's going on. Uh, how can people even turn into water like that? It's no magic I know of, but it's and it's a damn waste of a per and it's a damn waste of a person, an entire person just gone in an instant. Their families can't even have a burial. 
I sigh and run my fingers through my hair. None of it makes sense, right? It's all crazy. Who'd want to die like that? Mm-hmm, yeah. That's cult for ya, I guess. Yeah, I know. Poor sods are likely brainwashed like hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cillian stands and turns to us, still as serious as ever. I couldn't give my answer earlier, but I will agree to help you. Good, great. I take a deep breath and slowly exhale. Thanks, uh, thank the gods. Uh, this guy's skills are impressive. We might actually have a fighting chance with him around. He frowns as he looks around the bar. There might be more cultists around. I, I can sense some odd presences in the area. I, rec I would recommend that I accompany you from now on, just in case they decide to attack you again. Right, I look around at the destruction in the empty bar. Alright, thank you, Sir Knight. I can't express my relief. I can yeah, I can't express my relief, really. Oh. <laughs> you do not need to worry, my lady. Oh, <laughs> I will protect you with my life. He's so cute. I remember, like, when we were going through Shinji's story, like, this guy is, like, he's, like, He's such a, a clumsy knight, but at the same time, he's so like skilled in fighting. But like, also, he's so like, he's so naive because he followed that one crazy lady, the villain, the villainous lady, and he was so devoted to her even when she's like all like fucked up. <laughs> uh, feeling the heat rush to my cheeks, I push back a strand of hair and try to think of how to reply. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Finally, having some protection since the events of the past few days, it puts my mind somewhat at ease. And scoring, a knight, and, and scoring an actual knight of the High King, I didn't think it'd be this easy. But I was banking on the fact that all knights of Avalon have some kind of moral code, at least. As ironic as it is for a fae to have any. Okay. Oh yeah, true. Fays are the ones who tricks people, right? The denizens of the realm of Avalon. This consists of various different yet related ra races such as Alpha Sylphs, Nereids, Mermaids, and Pixies. I put my knife away and give him my contact information just in case. My my, a genuine fae, it sounds like a dream. Right. But it must hold some water if you can fluster Ar Aurelia. Aurelia. Yeah. Thanks from, thanks from me to you as well, Sir Knight. Cillian gives Pax a nod and she looks around at the empty bar. I know Sherry's gone, but we should leave money for some of those drinks if we want to show our faces, our faces in here again, eh? Yes, we should. Pax thankfully wanders off towards the bar, leaving Cillian and I alone. Are you sure you don't have something important? Are you sure you don't have something you need to do first? He nods in response, but doesn't move to leave. I do, but it can wait until you are somewhere safe. Oh, he bows to me, his hand resting over his heart. Oh, right. Thank you again. He's so cute. <laughs> He's so cute. He's so sincere. It's hard to know how to respond. What a rare person, especially in Yoru. I sigh and look around at the bar. It's not totally trash, but. Damn, I wonder what to tell Sherazel when I next see her. My phone's vibrating. Sun My phone's vibration vibration suddenly fills the dead quiet air. Oh, I pull it out and look down at the screen. Huh? Okura, Okura, Okura? Yes. I had some I had come to my acquaintance uh I had come to my acquaintance Naoki just yesterday. I asked him if he had any information on a certain location that the cultists had been preaching about. I couldn't find much online, so I went to the so I went to the one person I knew who devoted his life to knowledge. Uh, Pax, having just sauntered back over to us, looks more than interested. So, in case I believe Okura, Okura and Naoki were the two twins, the vampire twins. So, O oh, is the handsome professor calling you? Yes, one of the what's it called? Okura, I think the one that's calling us is the, the yeah. He is a professor at the academy, but he's a yeah. He's a vampire. I ignore her teasing and answer the phone, curious as to what he has to say. Hello? Hello, can we uh, can we hold a meeting tonight? Yeah, sure. A meeting? Why? Did you find something? Yeah, right? I've been researching. I have information that might be of use to you. Okay. But first, I need to know more about what you need to know. Hmm, <laughs> vaguely tempting. How can I sweeten the deal? Well, I'm completely thrown off by now. He's suddenly- Ah! I'm sorry, I got them mixed up. It's Naoki that's the professor, and Okura is his twin brother, yes. So I'm completely thrown off by Naoki's sudden change in tone and don't know what to say. Hey now. Uh, I'll just come over. <laughs> it's fine, I'm not busy anyway. And I was the one who asked for your help after all. Yes, good, I'll send you my address. Okay. So with that, I end the call and look at, the, and look at my two companions. Got a hot date? <laughs> Shut up. I only roll my eyes in response. Yes, feeling vibration in my hand, I glance down at my phone, reading the text I was just sent. 
Naoki seems to have some info for us relating to all of this. So, let's go. Yeah. Ooh, nice place. <laughs> After following the GPS's direction all the way to the, into the countryside, we arrive at a gate to a large mansion. Besides me, besides me Pax whistles. Your boy lives here? Nice. <laughs> I squint at the gate, uncertain if no Naoki actually does live here. I mean, I'm not surprised if, if, if he does. Something gray catches my eye, and I look down to see a cat walking through a small door in the gate. Oh, it has a little, little cat door. Cat. In an instant, I bend down and grab the cat's tail. It yells at me and squirms, but I quickly pull, I, but I lightly pull it back through the gate. What? What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing to that poor cat? Checking for a tag. I ignore its squirming and grab its neck. I'm ready to examine when a hand shoots out. It removes the cat from my hold so fast, I'm not sure I was even holding it. Oh, I look up and I look up to see an irritated yet familiar face glaring down at me. Jun? Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm Ugh. Okay, guys, you're gonna have to excuse me for my misinformation everywhere throughout this entire chapter. Okay, Okura is the last name. Naoki and Jun are the first names. God damn, fucking Christ. Anyways, yes, we met these two uh, in, I believe, Hikaru's route. Yes. Jun, yes. What the hell are you doing to Noodle? A <laughs> Noodle. <laughs> the gray cat now resides in Jun's arm, rarely watching me. Noodle? Why Noodle? Was just trying to find out if it had a tag that would tell me who the owner was. Guessing that's you. And why do you need to know who the owner is? Wanted to know who lived here. I nod towards the mansion in the distance. Your brother invited me over. Wasn't sure if this giant place was his. Uh, still holding Noodle, Jun eyes, eyes all of us. Yeah. He settles on Cillian before turning back to me. You could have just texted him back instead of hurting Noodle. <laughs> Let's see what we have to say about Noodle. Jun's is strangely named by beloved, by beloved cat, apparently. <laughs> Noodle. Jun huffily turns away from me to open the gate, and I suddenly feel awkward. Sorry. Yeah, you could have just texted him, be like, Hey, I'm outside. Can you, like, stick your head out the door and, like, wave to me just so I know that you live here? <laughs> Jun doesn't reply, though. Doesn't respond though. Yeah. He walks to a door next to the gate and places his face close to something I realize is an iris scanner. Fancy! The light on the lock turns green and Jun pushes the door open. Wow. Unexpectedly high tech for Naoki. Must be something Jun installed. Yes, I'm not sure if Jun means for us for us to, but he doesn't complain when the three of us follow him inside the gate. Wow. Nice. When we get inside the mansion, I somehow feel even smaller than I already am. I try not to gawk at its size, but Pax whistles from beside me, again. Cillian looks around, his eyes wide in wonder. It's almost as big as the Spring Castle as his throne room. Yeah. I take the time to look around at the place, noting the gothic influence that clearly suits the stoic professor. Jun says nothing, but Noodle leaps out of his arms and darts off somewhere. I'll take you to my brother, so don't wander around, got it? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Without another word, we all make our way to the- We all make our way up the stairs after Jun. Okay. Okay. So the moment we enter the room Naoki's in, Jun closes the door behind us. Okay, let's see what we have to say here. So a vampire, Naoki's twin brother who only likes to be called Jun, uh, while he was involved in, in, in the incident with your mentee Takumi, you don't know much about him other than that he's shady- other than that he's shady- he's involved in shady dealing, sorry. Rel's note, prickly and reclusive. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, never mind. Junichi Okura is his, like full name, but like we did meet him in um, Takumi's route because he was part of the uh, the mafia, the the not mafia, but like the, you know the, the 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 gang, the thing, the yakuza sort of. Yeah, that group. He stands beside Naoki, who is sitting at his desk, staring at all of us. Okay, so what do we have to say about his brother? So a vampire, an acquaintance of yours that you met when he helped you with a problem involving your friend and mentee Takumi over a year ago, and his own twin brother, Junichi. You have kept in contact mainly through brief chats and emails before asking him for help with finding information from, from time to time. When he, you two first met, you stared at each other for several moments without speaking. Rail's note, a bit strange and mysterious. <laughs> we just stared at each other first time meeting, we're just like, okay. So, however, Naoki doesn't say anything for several moments until Pax breaks the silence. Yes. Oh, no, didn't want that. So, yeah. What do you two get up? 
Uh, what do you two get up to with all this space? Dancing. Oh, what? Dancing? Really? For the moment, the impossible has happened. Pax doesn't have a comeback. I never thought I would see the day. <laughs> she blinks slowly at Naoki, but he doesn't say anything else. I never knew you could joke. Uh, Naoki ignores her completely. Instead, he, he eyes. Eh. Instead, his eyes immediately flip to me and settle there. His piercing eyes seem to bore into me as the silence drags on. What? <laughs> I know, you didn't mention company. Oh. Company, yeah. I look at the two people I brought with me as if just noticing them for the first time. Oh, sorry. I didn't think it'd be a problem. Uh, is it a problem? I don't know. Naoki's eyes finally leave me as he slowly looks down at a book on his desk. No. I assume you're all involved in this if you're here anyway, yeah. That's right, and this knight here is our latest recruit, here to bravely protect us. Right, recruit, yes. Naoki's, slowly, Naoki's slow way of speaking and moving seems to speed up for just a second as his, as his eyes dart from Pax to me. So you're recruiting people for protection? From what? Uh, that's... Uh, my mind blanks as I suddenly can't think of how to explain this ridiculous situation. I rub my eyes, thinking while ignoring Naoki's steady gaze. Uh, why don't we all discuss this in the morning? Oh, the morning? But we came- we, yeah, but we came all the way here. Does it seem like I'm lacking for room? Oh, <laughs> true. You- are you offering us to stay the night? Uh, the situation seems like a complicated one. It'd be better for everyone- for everyone if you were able to discuss it at your best. Aw, uh, I'm also making an educated guess that you can't stay at your own- at your own home. Based on what? One, you're recruiting protection. Two, you look exhausted, and you're not the type to push yourself if it's not necessary. So I'm assuming you can't go home to rest, or you're in a situation where you simply haven't been able to. Astute observations, right. That's kind of you, but we could bring danger here. I'd have expected an information broker to know more about vampires' abilities. Right. Uh, he's got you there, Rel. Right. You might as well give up. Chances are, no cultist is gonna bother coming all the way out here anyway. I could swear I could I could swear I see Naoki's eyes flash at Pax's words. The invitation is sudden, but he's right. Have to wonder if he planned this from the beginning. Despite my suspicions, I have no real way to argue, so I nod. Okay. I'm down to stay in a fancy mansion. Fine, although I still feel uncomfortable intruding upon you like this. Right. Oh, I'm sure you'll pay me back eventually. <laughs> I glance at Jun, who has been silent the whole time. He hasn't said a word, but he doesn't look happy. <laughs> now he pushes away from his desk and stands up. I'll show you to your room. Alright, Jun, can you handle the other two? Fine. <laughs> we really do appreciate the help, you know. Uh, service here could be friendlier, though. Pax. <laughs> Please, Pax. Uh, just be grateful that you just... Just be grateful that you get to stay here. Yeah. His voice cuts in from the door as he glares at her. Uh, his eyes slide back over... His eyes slide over to me, but he looks away and turns back to leave the room. Especially after what happened earlier. Uh, the, mem the memory of me grabbing Noodle earlier comes to mind and I can't help but feel like crap. I know, don't grab the, the cat by the tail, that's rude. I realize how much the cat m that cat must mean to him, and I feel bad that I did something that like that without knowing. Thankfully no one says anything else, and the twins lead the way out of the study. I'm surprised, actually, now that I think about it, I'm really surprised that, like, the story started off as, like, right into the action, almost, in a way, where it's, like, we didn't exactly see the lead-up where, like, you know, Pax comes in and was, like, we got a problem, and then that's when, you know, the cultist starts, like, attacking us kind of thing. Like, it's just, like, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, asserted that, you know, they've been on the run for a while now, and that this whole cultist, th cultist attacking them has been, like, a regular occurrence by now. We split off in opposite directions, and I follow Naoki down the hallway, past several doors. I mean, it it makes for, like, the story to progress faster, because I assume that if they included all that previous stuff, then it's, like, it would be super slow. Also, this is a demo, so I'm not too sure if, like, they might change the start of the story from the begin, like, from the actual full game, or, like, they'll just keep it as it is. So Naoki glances at one, nearly stopping, but then just as quickly shakes his head. Instead, he stops at the next one, pushing the door open. Why? Well, what was in the other room? <laughs> a dismal scene greets me. Moonlight pours into a small room with stone walls, gently illuminating the desk and chair near the window. Um... Yes? I... don't know what I was expecting. 
You don't like you don't like it. No, <laughs> no, hearing Naoki's normally quiet voice grow even quieter, I glance at him. No, 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 wait, it's well it's just a lot more different than what I'm used to. I quickly change the subject and gesture to the chair. You use this room? No. Yes, it's one of my favorite rooms in the house. Oh. <laughs> okay, sometimes I just need a change of scenery when writing or reading. His favorite room. He's giving us our, his favorite room. Oh. I look around for some kind of light switch but see none. Oh, whoa. Naoki snaps his fingers and suddenly the candles blaze to life. That's neat. Can I do it too or is it just something that you could do? <laughs> oh. A spell I bought in Choa. Oh, okay. Can, yeah, but can I do it too? Uh, Choa District, the magical, the magical district of Japan. It is unknown and unseen by normal humans and hidden away. It is one of the largest in the world. Yes. So I find that candlelight preserves the aesthetic. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> the aesthetic. Well, there certainly is ambience here. Uh, walking around the room, I examine it a little more. It looks cozier now that the candles are lit and there's even a shelf of books I've never seen before. The books look rare, like none I've, I've ever seen. I haven't even heard of some of the topics. Some of them are even in strange languages I didn't know existed. Hmm, I don't know. It's growing on me. <laughs> Leaning in the doorway, Naoki crosses his arms. Is it? It's austere, austere, but it does have a certain charm. I'm glad you agree. Drawn to the bookcase, I'm already running my fingers along the titles when he says this. I glance up at him, curious as to why he's being so kind. Or if that's really what this is about at- Or if that's really what this is about at all. I am really grateful for the room, of course. But I wonder, what's your motivation? Sure, we chat sometimes, but I don't know that that's enough- But I don't know that that's enough to risk your safety at the drop of a hat. At this, Naoki stands up straight and walks fully into the room, closing the door behind him. I'm a little intimidated as I stare up at his tall figure, but but fully ready to stab him if he tries anything. <laughs> yes, always ready to stab. You're ever the curious one, aren't you? Yes. Naoki looks somehow amused as he stares down at me. It's as if he knows what I'm thinking. It's something that we both share. Are you suggesting that that's? Are you suggesting suggesting that that's what's motivating you again this time? I guess curiosity. More or less. Okay, more or less. Huh. Jumping into a mess for the sake of satisfying curiosity once again. Even my curiosity has, has its limits. You don't believe me. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I just think there's more to the picture. I think there's more to it with you as well. I know that you're tired, but I'm eager to know more about the situation. I've done research on what you asked me about, but it's very broad. Without knowing specifically what you need to know, I can't help you as well. I look away for a moment, thinking, "What the? What he says makes sense. I, ha I have to give a little too if I want to partake his, uh, if I want to partake of his knowledge. I'm sure if you've seen those new cultists in town, they talk about the promised land. They say it's Atlantis. Ah, the sheep. I thought it might have to do with that. What? What do you, what do you mean, sheep? Why would they be causing trouble for you, though? Sheep. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, don't think- don't you think the term fits cults? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. And most people? Unable to think for themselves, only able to be herded and followed- and f only able to be herded and follow where others lead. Uh, hmm, I guess you're right. I never really thought about them before. I just try to- I just try to mind my own business. Yet, somehow you're being targeted by these cultists. Yes, why? Yes, well, it's kind of a long story. I've got time. All right. I can't help but smile at his eagerness. I use my wings and flutter lightly over to the bed to sit. Naoki takes a chair in front of me. Yes. It all started a few days ago, the day before I first came to you for help. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so, ah, okay, I like this. Okay, all right. Cool, cool. It's a quiet morning. Relaxing music just through my living room as I sip my water. Yes. I feel serene, awake, contented. I'm sitting at my dining table with my tablet, catching up on reading through the latest information I gathered. The day seems peaceful. Imagine that, my life, being peaceful my, being peaceful for once. Heh. Now, you just, you just had to say it. You just had to breathe that into existence. And then the universe was like, no, you think it's peaceful? A sudden feeling of worry comes over me. Hmm. I slowly turn to look over my shoulder to the rest of the apartment. With narrowed eyes, I look around. 
Memories of a certain unpleasant time in the past danced through my in the past danced through my head. Oh yes. Yes, there you go. Memories of a demon and tons of vampires flooding into my apartment play through my mind. This is where, like, Takumi got stabbed or sh I got shot or something, I don't know. Anyway, let's see what we have to say for demons. So, a type of demigod. Similar to dragons, demons are descendants of a, spe of a specific fallen god who had been infected with chaos and have limited and sporadic chaos-related abilities. They also embody supernatural strength. Okay. Along with the bloody and intense battle and all the emotions that came with it. Uh, ugh, that was a bad time. It was. But I shouldn't be so paranoid. What are the odds that something weird like that would happen twice? Oh, here she comes. A loud thud followed by door- A loud thud following a door knock sounds behind me. I half turn, half jump from the sound toward the door. Where I see- Where I see it lying on the ground. You've gotta be kidding me. My door! I just had it fixed! Instead of any demons or vampires, though, this time a slender man with bright, awkward colored hair stands there. Dude! My dude! What are you doing here? What? He looks surprised at the fallen door for a second before he looks at me. You should get your door fixed. Yes, I should. It was fixed. I uh, guess I don't know my own strength then. Oh my god. I glare at him silently. I actually forgot his name. <laughs> I actually forgot his name, but I know for a fact that he he appeared in. Oh my God, what's his name? What's his name? Tatsuya, yeah, Tatsuya. Oh my God, that took a hot minute. Anyway, so who the hell are you? Give me one good reason not to throw you out. Do you usually just stroll into people's places uninvited? Who the hell are you? Yes. Who who are you, and what the hell do you want? Right, right now, womanly company. <laughs> right now, womanly company? Why? Why me? I nearly go for one of my hidden knives right away. Let me rephrase that then. Why are you here? I'm here for Pax, of course. Oh my god. He crosses his arms, looking entirely too pleased with himself. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't but it wasn't that. Well she's not here, yeah. I haven't seen I haven't even seen Pax in probably a year. Well, she doesn't live here. Yeah, well, this is the address she gave me to visit her, so... Oh my god. Why did she tell... Why the hell did she give you my... Well, why the hell did she give this guy my address? I narrow my eyes at him, looking up, looking him up and down, while the man looks around my apartment expectantly. I feel some vague sense of familiarity somewhere in the back of my mind, but it takes me a minute to put his face to a name. Ah, that's right. Okay, so Katsunosuke Kase, Kaseima. Yeah, former leader of the Ryu clan. Yeah, the Ryu clan. Yes, let's see what we have to say about him. A half dragon, former leader of the Ryu clan, his family, the Kasiimas, know who uh, the Kasiimas own numerous resorts around Japan and Pacific Islanders. He lost his right to lead after being challenged by his cousin Tatsuya Yukimura, and has been apparently wandering ever since. Rel's note, flamboyant and annoying, an annoying fl playboy. Yes, he is. The things I've read about him, the, n the rumors I've heard, and just his general attitude. What does this- what does some bougie playboy like him have to do with Pax? <laughs> yes, then it hits me knowing Pax, it's... A booty call? You came to my house for a booty call? Oh my- are you- it's not even my booty! <laughs> the playboy turns to examine me instead. I mean, I can consider yours as she's not available. No! Shut up, that's not what I mean. Just get out. Pax isn't even here. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I've got lots of free time. I'll wait. But dude, I haven't seen her for a year, my dude. So I don't know if she's ever gonna come back. <laughs> Katsu actually walks over to my couch and sits down. He crosses his legs, pulls out a phone, and begins swiping away. <laughs> Probably on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too dumbfounded to even respond at first, and then annoyance rises within me. I don't even know where she is, so... Oh, there she is. <laughs> the sound of shattering glass and a loud thud as something hits the ground cuts off my words. A crumpled body in a blue coat lies there on the floor. Purple hair catches my eye immediately. Pax! Holy shit! Pax! <laughs> Pax? Only a faint groan answers me. I rush over to my oldest friend's side, shove, shoving aside the questions of why and how she just came crashing through my window. I nearly trip over my own feet in my hurry to get to her before I remember to use my wings to hover. I ignore the water dragon boy striding over to her and reach her before he does. 
What's up, my dude? Pax moves doubled over on her knees and gasping for air. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time I've seen blood streaming down my friend's face. But it's a rare enough event that I know how serious this is. Oh my god, are you alright? Pax, cl Pax clutches at her side in response. I try to remove her hand to check her injuries, but she grabs mine with one gloved hand instead. At Atlantis, the ruins. Okay, what? Did you say Atlantis? Oh, Pax manages to give a nod, then gasps from pain. Oh gosh, what? I take a deep breath, but steadily. I take a deep breath to steady myself and shove her hands out of the way, searching for wounds to heal. But even while I do that, my hand, my mind is desperately trying to grasp what's happening, what she could possibly mean. Atlantis. The, wor the word alone causes a heavy feeling to settle over me. It feels difficult to even breathe. An adventure of ours gone wrong. One of our gravest mistakes. Is it possible that the past has followed us even here? Yes. I feel a weight drop in my... Dropped to my stomach at the thought, at the reminder of one thing I wanted to forget for good. I look up at Pax, and as I heal her wounds, I know there's no point in asking if she's joking. She wouldn't, not about this. Okay, so a few years back, what we did in Atlantis, we thought, no, we hoped that it would stay in the past. It's like, <laughs> the, well, I know what you did last, Atlant last summer in Atlantis, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> the past always has a nasty habit of coming back to bite us in the ass. It was foolish to think that something like that wouldn't that wouldn't bleh. It was foolish to think that something like that wouldn't. I sigh and try to keep my hands steady as I heal Pax, but there's a slight tremble in my fingers that that refuses to go away. It's fine. Everything will be fine. I'll heal Pax and we'll talk and everything will be fine. Nope. I tell myself that, but I feel like I'm lying. Uh, after a few minutes, I finish healing Pax and pull away. Though the strange heaviness doesn't leave me entirely, I feel lighter at not having my best friend bleeding all over my floor. Pax, how did you- Ah, oh, man! <laughs> my windows! First my door, now my windows. The sound of more breaking glass cuts through my words. Oh my god. A man stands there, having somehow leapt through the glass after Pax. He stares at us with crazed eyes. I hardly have time to blink before a blast of water is hurled at us from the unknown enemy. Oh my gosh. On instinct, I move, up, I move my hands upwards, creating a barrier of air. The, the water, but the water redirects itself away from us and out the window. Oh, I look over and see that the playboy had transformed into his true form. Nice! <laughs> I guess you aren't entirely useless. Rarely, in fact, I am. Uh, rarely, in fact, am I entirely useless. <laughs> you could have fooled me. Pax hops to her feet, hands held in front of hands held out in front of her. Her eyes are sharp as she stands, ready to counter any attack. Okay, so subtly moving in to stand in front of her, I stand. I stare down the hooded the hooded intruder. No idea how you got up here, but I'll give you 10 seconds to get out. Yeah, the intruder is eerily silent. He stares at us with lifeless eyes. That outfit, th that outfit, could this guy be one of those cultists I've seen around town? Even so, why is he here? Even ignoring the breaking in part, the guy gives me an undeniably eerie chill. The air is thick with tension. Silence entirely dominates the scene as we stand there, tense and frozen, eyeing each other for any movement. Do you know how to talk, fool? I know, right? Like, <laughs> I do, but I only need her. The guy stares steadily at Pax. Oh, what a coincidence. That's who I need, too. <laughs> Both of your approaches could use some work. Seriously. I didn't expect a water dragon, but maybe you'll be of use- Maybe you'll be of use to our god. Oh, that sacrifice. God? In a split second, several things happen all at once. The intruder pushes his hands out, creating a wave of water and sending it right at me. Oh my gosh, Pax jumps in front of me. Holding her hands out, she makes a sweeping motion to redirect the water to the side and back at the and back at the attacker. He holds his hands up and a faint silvery blue light surrounds him, stopping the water from reaching him. All his focus now turns to Pax, who doesn't let up, throwing attack after attack after attack. Okay. Katsu looks on, at first stunned, then moves his arms in a, circle mo in a circle motion and sends a huge torrent of water at the man. Despite the, combi despite the combined relentless assault, his barrier holds in place. Wow, okay, you're, you're strong, I guess. But, but that doesn't stop Pax, not for a moment. Okay, so Pax glances at me for the briefest of moments and I nod, slipping away out of sight. Quietly, I use my wings to hover above the ground and move to the intruder's side. I, he spots me, but it's already too late. I fly forward and knee him in the jaw, sending him stumbling backwards. While, the, while he stumbles, I move again, faster, harder this time. 
I twist my body in the air, drawing more power from it. Okay. I surround myself with invisible air currents and kick him from the side, sending him flying to flying into the wall with a crash. Uh, before the dust can settle, before the dust can settle, the man is up on his feet again. He charges at me, but I easily fly out of the way. Instead, he runs face first into Pax's fist. He groans and collapses to the floor with a bloody nose. Haha! <laughs> Pax slams his Pax slams her foot onto his chest, holding him down in place. She glares down at him with a silent but deadly warning in her eyes. Katsu slowly walks up to the scene, looking distinctly disappointed. Damn, I hardly got to show off. <laughs> I, I land next to Pax and crouch in front of the guy. Who sent you? The hooded man ignores me and looks only at Pax. We will find you again. My family knows who you are. We've seen you. You will give our god what he wants. And then he will give us Atlantis. I click my tongue in annoyance. What the hell are you talking about? You're from that cult, aren't you? What, is his, what does my friend have to do with anything? The man looks as if he's about to talk, but suddenly his eyes go blank. Hmm? He's gonna explode into water. Then in a strained, loud, then in a strained, loud and unnatural voice, he begins to speak. Oh. My min, mi min hon tai ido me tuanan me. La la umher manan sarda tai fight. Emen on indo me no un what? I narrow my eyes, trying to understand what the man is saying, but I only manage to catch one word. Fight. Yeah, same. I don't understand. What? The man opens his mouth with the same blank... Uh, the man opens his mouth with the same blank eyes as if he was screaming. But no sound comes out. Then his entire body erupts into a puddle of red water beneath Pax's boot, clothes and all. Ugh. It happens so instantaneously, I can hardly comprehend what I saw. what I just saw. What the hell? Well, it's not every day I get a man under my boot. She, s she lightly shakes off her foot before looking at the puddle of morbid amusement on her face. Uh, how about a dragon instead? Can we not right now? <laughs> how about a dragon instead? You sure recover quick. Ah, ah, good old shameless Katsu. It's been a while. Unfortunately, I'm a little distracted at the moment. Seriously, you two? A man just disintegrated into water. Don't you even wonder how? How the hell are you two so calm? Katsu shrugs. Okay, so priorities. Oh my god. Pax rubs the blood on her face off of her. Yeah, Pax rubs the blood on her face off of, on off on her sleeve. What can I say? Jokes help me cope with insanity. Okay, you're not wrong on that. <laughs> Pax waves a hand, and the water covering my apartment is gone, leaving the place nice and dry again. I walk over to the table and pick up my now dry tablet, not sure how to feel about this whole situation. What exactly just happened? I can't think of how to possibly phrase this weirdness, so I gesture towards where the guy turned himself into a puddle. Yes, I'm interested to hear too. Right, so Pax, got any stories? I look to Pax expectantly, feeling a familiar cold sensation wash over me. I almost want to I almost want it to be a dream. Pax sighs tiredly and plops down onto the one of the seats. Alright, sit back and let me tell you the tale of how everything suddenly went to shit. Okay! Uh, I was trying to sell off one of the things I- I was trying to sell off one of the things we grabbed back in Atlantis when I realized that I was being followed. Okay, let's see what they have to say about Atlantis. A location that was supposedly lost beneath the waves in time- was supposedly lost beneath the waves to time thousands of years ago. However, you and Pax managed to accidentally find a few- find it a few years back when you told no one. Right. I thought it might be someone looking to cash in a bounty. Uh, seems like the likeliest of the scenarios back then. I led them on a long walk before trying to confront them where I had an advantage, but... Where did you get that dagger? Who gave it to you? What do you know about Atlantis? What? The barrage of questions was, the barrage of questions was surprising enough on its own. But the fact that he mentioned Atlantis of all things... Uh, what are you talking about? I never told anyone where I got the dagger, nor did anyone know of our little adventure in Atlantis. They weren't supposed to, anyway. No one ever, no one was ever supposed to know, not anyone. And yet, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't lie to me. What do you know about Atlantis? Naturally, I didn't tell him anything. I don't think he took it very well. Yes, he lunged for me, trying to grab for my collar. But I sidestepped out of the way. Oh, he spun around, trying to grab for me again. I swatted him off and danced out of his reach. Okay, all right, that's enough. You just... Uh, all right, that's enough. You just can't get the point, can you? I don't know anything about whatever it is you want from me. 
uh, you, you're not going to get anything out of me. So, so how about we both go our separate ways before I'm forced to slit your throat? I tried to be nice, to offer him some sort of out, but his only response was to go for me again. I got a few blows in while dodging him. I thought I had the upper hand, but as, I tur but as it turned out, he had some friends. Oh, pff, and they all look alike. <laughs> they came out of nowhere with more slithering, with more slithering around the shadows. Yeah. Well, shit. <laughs> Things got bad real quick. They surrounded me, and though I thought I could handle it, well, you saw the state I was in. I used my emergency portal stone to get away, but apparently, a portal stone. Ooh, a magical stone that can teleport you anywhere you've been under certain conditions. Okay. Wow. Pax trails off shrugging and looking over the over at the window. Ah, oh, okay, so that's how that's how that's what happened. So, one of them must have managed to grab onto you before you teleported. Yes. Not a wonder not a wonder the teleport messed up and you came through the window then. Yes. I sigh. This is going to be a huge annoying problem, I can feel it. It yeah, it already is. Yeah, the, that guy said he'd be back for me as well. I don't like it. Yeah. Why would they even be after you so hard anyway? Uh, how do they recognize the dagger if no one else has been to Atlantis? None of this makes sense. And those guys, uh, they definitely have they definitely have to be from that weird cult that's popped up everywhere lately. Ah uh, yes, that. I've tried to ignore them. Same for me. I don't even understand why they I don't even understand why there'd be enough interest in Atlantis nowadays to spring up a cult. I rub my temples. There's no way around it, I guess. We got to find out more about this cult. We all fall silent for a moment, thinking thinking before Katsu ruins it. So, Atlantis, a lost empire, and an adventure involving cults who worship it, huh? <laughs> the myths of Atlantis were some of my favorite bedtime stories as a little dragon. And here you two are, saying that it's real. Okay, wait. Why is Katsu here anyway? Booty call. <laughs> Booty call for you, apparently. I tried to tell him that my house was not a place to pick up... Uh, I tried to tell him that my house was not the place to pick up missed calls, but you came crashing in. My eyes slide toward Pax to see her entrenched to see her entrenched in a fit of giggles. Of course, of course. Why else would a man like him be in your living room? Ah, uh, hey. Come on, Rel. How long has it been anyway? What? She slaps her knees and gestures vaguely at the door. And what happened to that? Oh my god. She needs to get that fixed. I paid for it, and he, I paid for it, and it was working fine before you came in. Uh, you have to admit, he's not wrong. We do need to get that fixed. Oh, it was fixed, right? I'm telling you, it was fixed. Apparently not well. Okay, I'll give you that. He stops and looks at us with, in what appears to be genuine concern. You said you paid for that? Ugh, you don't actually expect me to pay for that shoddy workmanship, do you? Actually, I do. Consider it an opportunity to upgrade to something more secure. I'm so annoyed that I can't even begin to think of a think up a response. You know, my fabulous mental library of knowledge about Atlantis may be may be of help here if you're going to look into this strange business. I seriously doubt you could tell me anything I couldn't look up myself. All contraire, one of me. Oh my god, I'm certain that I can. This situation sounds interesting, so let me take along. Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> You've already seen my skills in testing doors and assisting in fights. Now you'll be able to now you'll be able to partake to partake of the benefit of my presence. I'd rather not. Don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> Actually, I don't. Of course not. I've been flowing where the ocean, where the great ocean of life takes me, and this Atlantis thing sounds like the perfect watery adventure. I can't miss out. I have to sh I have to shove down my nausea at his words. Ugh, could you be mo any more cheesy? At least prove you have some useful information before asking something like that. Oh, so you do wish to partake of Katsu's fabulous water knowledge? Well, water dragons know more things of Atlantis than most people don't. Uh, for example, we know that it is a sacred location where the great sea god where this great sea god rests. Okay, out of the corner of my eye, I notice a look of surprise flash across Pax's face, and she whispers but one word: mirror. What? Katsu nods, pleased with himself. The cultist mentioned the god, right? I'm certain that whatever is going on, Mirror is the one involved. Okay. Taking a breath to pause my story, I see that Naoki is staring at me more intently than ever. Atlantis, Mirror, and the cults. Yay. Cults. Fabulous. Fabulous cults. 
So a cult that has sprung up within the last year uh, that chants the name of a god named Mir. They worship Atlantis, uh, claiming it as a glorious promised land that will be restored if others join the cult. They can be identified by blue hoodies with tridents on them. Okay. And you're saying you've actually been to Atlantis? Yes. Yes, I have. I see. Fascinating. I'd love to ask you more, but I think that's enough for tonight. Uh, wait, there is one more important thing. Something you should know if you're going to get involved. Uh, yes? The SSU is involved. It's complicated. Oh yes, the the the, ma the police department. Oh no, oh no, oh no, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What happened? Oh, shit. Ah! What the hell is that all about? Oh my god. Here. I have no idea. I have no idea I could reverse like that. What the hell was that was weird. So the secret supernatural unit at the name as the name suggests This is the part of the local police that employs supernatural detectives They only take the most elite detectives to handle the most difficult cases Humans are rare, but may join if they have sufficient capability to protect themselves and knowledge of the supernatural world Yes, there we go So I see yes, so I sigh heavily and rub my eyes the stress of having a fear constant the stress of having to fear constant attacks has worn uh, me more than I thought. Naki doesn't miss it, however. Thank you for sharing some of your story with me, but you need to sleep. Yeah, tomorrow I'll share what I found and we can talk about the next steps. Arranging a meeting with anyone who's involved in this so far may be prudent as well. Yes, I know. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, Naki walks to the door, then stops looking back at me. Okay. I know things must be harder than I can imagine right now, but you are safe here, and so so I hope for at least a little while you can rest. Good night. Ah, he's so sweet. Naki snaps his fingers again, and the light blows, and the lights blow out. Ah, okay. Without waiting for a response, he closes the door behind him. Now that I'm alone, I don't have to be so guarded anymore. The tension I had been holding in my body releases like an uncoiled rope. Okay, before I completely collapse, I manage to turn and fall face first into the pillow behind me. I shut my eyes and drift off to sleep before I s before a single thought can take hold. Hey, there we go! Oh my god! I was just gonna say, I was like, I if this is gonna continue on beyond like the whole going to sleep and the next day thing, then I'm gonna stop the episode there. But no, we got it! It worked out perfectly. But also, this theme song though for this menu. But anyways, there we go you guys! I hope you enjoyed my let's play of um... What's it called? Of this Mystic Destiny Echoes. Actually, hold on, let me see what I am for time. I might just go back on those choices that we did for, what's it called? Uh, Katsu. So those are the that was the only instance in which we had choices that we could do. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that really quickly before we end this episode here, okay? So let's uh, load. Let's go here and let's see what we we have to say if we say, Give me one good reason not to throw you out. Right? Give me one good reason. Right now. I happen to have a multitude of excellent reasons. I seriously doubt that, but I'm listening. Okay, I'm here for Pax, of course. Okay, so he crosses his arms looking entirely too pleased with himself. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Okay, there we go. So that's what that's what he says in response to that. Let's do it one more time for that last answer. Or for that last, yeah. Do you usually just stroll into people's places uninvited? Yeah. Uh, if there's if their doors are apparently broken and I need to be in there, yes. <laughs> I take a deep breath. You have 10 seconds to tell me why you're here before I remove you. I'm here for Pax, of course. There you go. So he's either way, he's snarky and he's sassy. Okay, there you go. So let's go back to the main menu. And then, yeah, I can share my final thoughts with you guys on this. So I'm super excited for this, actually. I like this little spinoff. I'm expecting much because it is from, of course, Aeon Dream Studios, and they do dope visual novels. Like, Serendipity of Aeons is amazing in itself. Art is amazing as well. So I am super curious to see where this story goes in terms of, you know, getting to see, getting to go on adventures on our favorite villainy sort of characters from the original story. So yeah, there you go, guys. I have no idea when this game, this full game is going to be released. The last I heard of it from their website and their update post, it's that it's been delayed, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. But either way, if you guys are super interested in following this game or getting the, the game yourself to try out, feel free to follow them on Ichio, follow them on you know their social medias uh, to check up on updates and such. Because yeah, I 
I'm pretty sure you'll get faster updates than it is than it, you know than you asking me about information about this game. So yeah, there you go, guys. Um, what the hell is this? Oh yeah, okay, that's just Dawn files. There we go. That's just their updates. It's this is their first of the demo, so I'm sure once the time comes around, maybe at some point they'll release another version 2.0, I think, or whatever the hell, before the full game release. But either way, regardless, that is it for now. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this Let's Play. Uh, I'll see you guys in my other Let's Play, but for now, bye!